Welcome to Micro, a podcast for short but powerful writing. I'm your host, Drew Hawkins. Infatuation, the absence of love, pairings that seem destined to fail. The three pieces in this episode investigate romantic love in various stages, all of them less than ideal. The relationships in this first piece hinge on life and death, part fable, part nightmare. Nevertheless, there are certain elements that ring true in above-water relationships. It's called Beneath the Whale-Shaped Shadows. It was written by Rachel Rainey Taub and published by Literary Orphans. Enjoy. Beneath the Whale-Shaped Shadows by Rachel Rainey Taub The sound of coral rushing past your ears can be erotic. Men always notice this, ask why the ocean echoes like a womb. I would ask the same of their sky, with its bizarrely crashing waves. I loved each in his own way. After they'd heard my song and jumped from their ship, wide-eyed and gasping, I'd exhale into their mouths as we swam down to my home. They'd float pleasantly in my parlor as I prepared drinks and returned with air and a whiskey-honey cocktail. We talked. They'd speak of war and ladies' fashion. I'd describe which ships and subs had recently passed, leaving whale-shaped shadows below. We always shared a love of astrology and the way humpbacks investigate passing boats. One described elephants as land whales with ears, and I laughed so hard I nearly forgot to give him air. Eventually, they'd take these breaths for kisses, which I didn't mind, and we'd drift towards my bedroom. After, we'd sleep, and without my breath, they would be dead by morning. And then, Garasim. He was drowning when I found him, not gaping. Below, he speaks only of his wife. He describes her underarm hair, their ventures training dolphins for war. I'll tell you more in the morning, he says. I keep him alive all night. I ache not for the ending, or even for his heart, but for the way he whispers her name against my teeth like it's a pearl. Agnesa. Yes, it's difficult to keep him alive. We sleep mouth to mouth like yawning guppies. Sometimes he begs, or stares numbly at the underside of sunlit waves, watching for his Malutka submarine to cast its shadow but he belongs only to me. He'll grow old here in my grotto, and I will love his tongue's flick till the very last time he takes my breath. Rachel Rainey Taub is a fabulous writer whose work has appeared in Hayden's Ferry Review, Hobart, and The Millions, and won the 2020 Thomas Wolfe Fiction Award. You can find her on Twitter and Instagram at Rachel Taub, or on her website at rachelraineytaub.com. The setup, the change of tone, and the surprising twist breathe life into this next brief, original, and highly specific piece. It's called Coup de Foudre. It was written by Catherine Gleason and published by Cheap Pop on October 20th, 2020. Enjoy! de foudre. At the Virginia Wolf Conference, I sat with Jess and doodled, and during a break you appeared, all smiles and hugs, and yet we hadn't met before. No, not yet, but I'd seen you, seen you on stage, dancing in a torn black dress, and at that moment everything stopped and at the same time rushed ahead, a whooshing in my ears, the flight of many tiny wings. What season was it? 
At the conference, you were sleeveless, your milkmaid arms glowing in the overhead lights. Could it have been November? In the spring at the bar, I admired your new haircut and flinched when women dropped at our table to say hello, but the whole time your eyes were on me, wrapping warm, and when you kissed me, I was sealed, swaddled, branded forever in your orbit, a happy moon. We finally went back to your place. What time was it? And stayed sunrise to sunset and sunrise again. Those days were cappuccino foam bouncing along the street together. We shopped, we ate, we snapped photos on the back of someone else's motorcycle. You moved to the big city. Gravity shifted, months of gnawing and chats on the phone, and your voice faded, your spirit off-seeking. What year was it? I returned home to a letter from you, your loopy handwriting warm in my grasp. Dear Kay, know that I love you, but I cannot love your sin. You are not a lesbian. You are merely someone who chooses to practice that lifestyle. Sin, you ask, yes, sin, it is all around us, and we must fight it, fight it off, and grow toward the light. Catherine Gleason writes in a number of genres and spends a lot of time with cats. You can find her on Twitter at KGleasonWriter or on her website at KatherineGleason.com. For our final piece, heat, skin, and a cheesy sign create the backdrop of this uncomfortable moment. Fair warning, bodily fluids feature prominently in this piece. It's called Not Hard at All. It was written by Rachel A.G. Gilman and published by Flash Fiction Magazine on September 14th, 2020. Enjoy. Not Hard at All I am lying upside down on my bed with the bottoms of my feet pressed to my headboard and cow semen pooled in a puddle over my belly button. A drop of cum drips down the skin, covering my bottom-most false rib. I'm not very good at breakups. Balmy, curry-scented air wafts through the window in my Rose Hill apartment. It is going on two in the morning and still in the mid-80s outside. The coolest temperature for the day, August in Manhattan. Cal lies next to me, my burgundy lipstick stamped on his collarbone. We've been trying to call it quits all summer. We tried on the floor of his kitchen the morning after his graduation party when I was only staying for pancakes. We tried before he left his job at the Italian pastry shop after getting off the wait list at law school in Chicago. We'll try anything. Anything but admit our feelings this past year have barely spanned two burrows. Our proximity has allowed for our burning physicality. Our physicality is our entire relationship. Three states will break our fuse. Cal turns toward me, his blonde brown hair hot against my shoulder. When is your flight? I ask. He mumbles into my chest. Seven hours. I dip my finger into his warm stickiness on my stomach, creating a spiral design like I'm playing that childhood game M.A.S.H., determining whom I'll marry and how many babies we'll make together. My eye lands on the wooden sign on my wall. A gift from my mother, it has these cheesy statements about an ideal partner. Cal and I almost knock it off its peg whenever we fuck. It sticks now to the humidity on the layers of rented white paint. What was all of this anyway? I ask. What the hell are you talking about? He replies. Drops of sweat build up in Cal's hairline. One falls and lands in the middle of a fresh field of zits on his left cheek that I ran my tongue over hours earlier. His chest is so red, fair skin reacting to the temperature inside and out. I touch him, pressing my fingers that have gone numb from bad circulation into his neck, turning the skin momentarily back to white like a magic trick. 
Did you ever love me? I ask. Cal stares and says nothing. He leans up on his elbows, then climbs back on top of my body. He works to arrange his dick inside again, and I do not tell him yes, but I do not tell him no. With each thrust, I read the stupid sign instead. Listen to her secrets. I think about the English fellow I went to dinner with last winter, who carried around Portnoy's complaint and used too much chapstick. Remember her favorite color. I think about the burly man I kissed at my cousin's spring wedding, whose biggest shit to give regarded the aesthetic of sandwiches. Say she has the key to your heart. I think about the humidity of a Midwestern fall, and if Cal was really my boyfriend, if our sex was ever more than mediocre, and the importance of the clitoris. That should be on the sign, too. I wonder if we had perhaps burned a little slower if I would have been able to love him. We finish. Well, he does. Cal leaves forty-five minutes later, his only goodbye the second patch of jizz on my tummy. I let it dry so I can pick it off later before I forge out to find frozen yogurt and free air conditioning. I guess this is a breakup. My fingers touch my arm, turning my own fiery skin back to moist, pallid normality. It's not really magic. It's really not hard at all. Rachel A. G. Gilman is a creator and editor-in-chief of The Rational Creature, a columnist for No Contact magazine, and a writer whose work can be found online and in print throughout the U.S., U.K., and Australia. You can find her on Twitter and Instagram at Rachel A. G. Gilman, or on her website at rachelagilman.com. Micro is edited and curated by Dylan Evers and produced and hosted by me, Drew Hawkins. Our theme song is by Matt Ordez. You can find all the information about this episode's writers, their featured work, and the publications where they were published, as well as a transcription of this episode in the show notes. Subscribe to the show on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts and check out some of our other episodes. We're also now on YouTube, so if you need subtitles, check us out there. And of course, you can always find our shows at micropodcast.org, and you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Podcast Micro. Thanks for listening.